All right, folks. So uh, we had just talked about earlier, we talked about the double slit apparatus and how these are theta with a path difference, and now in single slit. So what happens in single slits? You have this thing here. You have a, a light source here, right? And now let's say that this is your eye, okay? Your eye, you know, this is your pupil looking at some sort of light source. What does your retina read? It doesn't read a point source. That point source becomes a huge diffraction envelope on the, in the retina. And it occupies a lot of space. So this is your light source um, in red. And you're going you're gonna to have a diffraction envelope here. And we talked about, you know, uh, where the minima are going to be. These minima are located at sine theta equal to and lambda over A, lambda over A for the first minimum, two lambda over the second minimum, so on and so forth. But the point being is that each light source here becomes what? A whole diffraction envelope, okay? So now let's say that you have another light source here. Like, okay, think in terms of the two headlights on a car, right? And you have this guy here, and this guy will also become a diffraction envelope, maybe look like that, some, you know, something like this, okay, uh, here. Right? So does your eye, and you're looking this way, these two peaks look so close to each other, does your eye tell apart that the fact that you have two, you know, that these are two headlights from a car? Um, maybe, maybe not. So what is the criterion uh, for which you can resolve these two envelopes in your eye? This is getting into the Riley criterion now, resolution limits and whatnot, right? So the angular position of the first minimum for this guy is lambda over A. And this one is going to have, you know, from where it is, from its own central axis, it's going to be lambda over A this way. And this one is going to be lambda over A that way. So the idea is that if these two, see these two peaks, these two main, main envelopes, if they meet, if they meet at below the half point, right, uh, of the peak, then you can resolve them. If not, then you can't, right? So what does that look like? Well, for me to be able to resolve them and have uh, to have a peak that looks like this, Okay, let's say the sources are up there. And the other peak maybe looks something like that. Okay, and the idea now is that if the two central peaks meet at below the half height, then I can tell them apart. Okay? And Riley's criterion says that, okay, well, from the aperture, okay, let's say you have a single aperture, or you have two, basically you have two sources of light coming through an aperture, they give you that, but for a double slit apparatus also, you, know, you have a double slit sitting here, okay? And you have two diffraction envelopes, right? Uh, so, uh, what happens in the case of double slit apparatus? Yeah, indeed, because you have two sources, you should be able to see these guys, right? But what happens now, because these two slits are so close to one another, remember, we're talking about, you know, um, so let, let's say, if the car is really far from me, what happens is, guys, the further the car away is, is the, the further away the car is, the closer these two envelopes will be to one another. At some point, I will, you know, beyond the point of um, half maximum, if they're meeting closer, like if the uh, source is further away, these two envelopes will coalesce into one. That's some, you know, and that's, you know, so you're looking at Highway 1, let's say, traveling Highway 1 in Ontario, Northern Ontario, uh, single, uh, single lane, undivided highway, you look further ahead, night, kind of dozy, thinking, is this a semi, is it a motorcycle, you see a big blob of light, and then suddenly the big blob kind of starts to become wider, and at some point, oh, oh my God, that is actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a big car, it's not a motorcycle. So that's what's happening. As the source gets closer to you, the angular separation between the, uh, between the two sources which is the same as the angular separation between the two envelopes, gets bigger and bigger to the point where I can realize that this is not just one light, it's actually two lights, right? So uh, you can see that the further away the car is, the closer these two envelopes will be to the point where I lose the resolution, looks like a blob, right? But in the case of a double slit apparatus, indeed, I mean, each, each slit is gonna give me an envelope, right? And just like with the car lights being so far away from me, we call it angular separation between them. It's so small, these things merge together, right? Uh, I lose a resolution beyond the uh, 
uh, half height. If, I, if they merge above the half height, then I lose the resolution. In here, it's a lot more pronounced than this. It's not, even, it's not even half height. These things are so close to one another. We're talking about a few microns compared to meters. These two envelopes are so close to one another, they look like exactly one envelope. Right? So we're going to examine next, uh, talk a little bit about the Rayleigh criterion and uh, examine how this is going to play with the double slit apparatus. But before that, let me talk about the Rayleigh criterion. So we said that these two sources are separated by, let's say, okay, and there are a couple of problems in the notes on this. You can actually look at them now and do these problems, hopefully. Uh, what I have is this guy produces his envelope, if this guy produces his envelope, and what's going on here? They come through an aperture of with A, and that's your I. So now, uh, circular apertures are a bit different than rectangular apertures, and we talk about that a bit in the notes as well. Uh, so what's going on here? We have these two, you know, sources of light separated by, to the aperture, right? This is a bit of a caricature, it's not exactly like that, but, you know, ah, here, right? It's not gonna work very well for me, but, you know, see, but, because things are not realistic here. But, okay, so, uh, basically, this angle, okay, this angle, uh, now, you know, this is the angle, angular separation of the two objects. It's also the angular separation of the, it's the angular separation of the two objects, okay, and it's the angular separation of the two peaks, okay, right? When are the two peaks going to meet at half point, right? Well, Riley, who did some work on this, and said that when you are able to resolve the two pieces when meet at half height for a circular aperture, that angle resolution angle, Riley angle is given by sine theta r equal to 1.22 lambda over the aperture width, okay? So the angular resolution, for you to be able to tell two objects apart, right, uh, the when the peaks meet at half height, so, you know, that angle, so this will look like this. Uh, I have my two sources here. This is my aperture. And the two sources are here, such that, well, let's say, let's see, we have this. Uh, hopefully I'll get it right. And we have that. And then now we say that, you know, when these are meeting at more or less half height, this is the angle we call, this is the angle we call, uh, here, this guy should be down there, right, aperture. Uh, this is my, I'll try to cheat here, okay. One down, down here, a little bit more, okay. So, something like that, okay. Um, the aperture should be a bit further back, right. right. Uh, so, if you were through the aperture, right, when the two peaks meet at half height or below, right, the critical angle, theta r, right, is where the angular separation is for a circular aperture. Circular aperture is one sine theta r equal to 1.22 lambda over d. Okay, you can do your own calculation if you want. If the aperture is, is not circular, if it is, uh, if it is rectangular, you can try to figure out what the resolution angle will be between the two sources before you uh, before you lose the resolution. So basically, as long as the angular separation, this angular separation theta here, is bigger than this angle, we can tell the two objects apart. So you're looking at two mountain ranges on Mars, okay? You have a telescope. Now you can, you can tell, think a little bit about what improves the resolution, okay? This is the apertures through which you see things, okay? This is your eye, you're limited. It was like five millimeters or whatever, okay? So let's, let's take an example. Let's take an example. Let's do an example now. Uh, uh, I'll do it over there, right? So let's say, right, being very specific, uh, how far, let's say, a car, right? A car, uh, a car's headlights, headlights. Are two meters apart, and you are viewing this with, let's say, you look at white light, a bunch of. Let's say, on average, it's uh, you know 
I don't know, 500 nanometer light. So uh, viewing with, you know, you have laser sight. So viewing with uh, lambda equal to 500 nanometers, okay? Okay, uh, how far, how far can car be from you? before you lose resolution. Resolution. Okay, so what are we talking about? This is your car, this is the two meters, okay? And uh, how far can the car be from you? This is distance D, that you're trying to find out before you lose resolution, okay? So we can do it with approximations or we can do it exact. Okay, um, we're gonna play the game that, well, sine theta resolution, sine theta resolution, we know what this is, why is given by 1.2 to lambda over A, right? And that's equal to 1.2 to times lambda is 500 times 10 to the power minus nine nanometers divided by, oh, uh, your, uh, your your pupils, a is equal to, so your pupils are, pupils are five millimeters in, in diameter, okay? So how does that work? So you're looking at something, your eye pupil is five millimeters in diameter, how far can the car be before? So it's, you just plug that in there. So this is five times 10 to the power minus three, okay? And that gives you the resolution angle, okay? So now, so that's theta r. We can, we can figure it out. So in this case, uh, sine theta is 1.22. Uh, this is minus seven, that by minus eight, sometimes the bottom is minus four. 10 to the power minus four is sine theta, okay? Double check my numbers, 100, uh, seven, four, four, yeah, okay? So sine theta should be, so the angle should not be more than, but how do you now translate that into how far can you be? Well, you can, you can wing it, you can, and you can tell, you know, you could just say that, okay, can you please now pause the video and do this calculation on your own? You could do it precisely, or you could do it kind of um, approximately, and they're both gonna be very close, right? If you want to do it approximately, you say, well, okay, uh, I can approximate, approximate, well, look, this angle is so small, right? So I can say that this is given by, well, I can say that this distance here, one meter, so I say that one meter divided by the distance D that I want is equal to what? Tan of what? Tan of half the angle, theta r over two, okay? You can do it this way, all right? So we can calculate theta, convert, what? Well, uh, or you can say that, you know, you can say that, you know, because the angle is so small, one over D, the distance here is one meter, one meter, why? I mean, it's not just, one meter over D is equal to sine theta resolution over two. Or you can say that really, this distance, because things are so small, two meters over D is equal to sine theta resolution. This is okay, this is okay, this is okay, all right? If you want to be precise, 100%, you go there, that way. Uh, a little bit less precise that way, a little bit less precise. So you say that this, this divided by that is more or less sine theta, that's okay. The angle is so small, you can get away with all of those. Why don't you, as a matter of fact, for this exercise, try this, try that, try that, and see how far apart they are. Am I right, am I wrong? Uh, so, all right, so given that now, guys, we, let's use this loose, loosey-goosey, whatever here, uh, you know, uh, approximation. Says that two meters, you know, and do the other two on your own. Two meters over D is equal to sine theta resolution. So uh, D is equal to two meters over sine theta resolution, that's 1.2222 times 10 to the power minus four, and that's gonna be like, uh, um, it says, about, well, 20,000 or so. Two, like, I don't know, let's say, call this one, approximately 20 kilometers, okay? Now it says that the car can be 20 kilometers away from you before you lose resolution, right? 
uh, it's a bit unrealistic. Why? Because there is, you know, there is uh, monochromatic factors in the, in the fact that you're not looking at things with one light. What limits resolution, they call limits on resolution, you can look that up, it's a very interesting science. We use that in, we talk about optics and lenses, it comes into play when we're looking at, what do we use optics for? What do we use telescopes for? Well, you think about it, guys. We use telescopes for looking at, what kind of telescopes do we use? We use light telescopes, we use infrared telescopes, we use radio telescopes, we use, you know, radar, right? Uh, what limits the resolution for your radar if you're looking at like incoming vessels at sea or let's say World War II, uh, beginning of the radar? How many planes are coming towards me? One, two, three, hundred, right? What limits the resolution is really what, guys? From this perspective, the main limits to the resolution are lambda and A. Now, if you have um, it's a big discussion, a big topic. It's really interesting. There's like real, real, real applications here. So, in an electron microscope, right, we use electrons. And electrons, as we'll talk about in the last unit of the course, and I mentioned that earlier to you, because of the Broglie, uh, electrons are both particle and wave. And because they have high momentum, they have really small wavelengths, and we can use them to look at matter. So, what do you look at with electrons? Electron microscopy. Scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope. You can look deep into the material, come up with amazing images of stuff that you, you know. We actually, I have looked, I was, you know, making some material for my uh, research. It's called MCM41. It's, uh, I'm talking about 30 angstrom with uh, channels. 30 angstrom, really small. Uh, we were looking down, we couldn't see the channels with the electron microscope. We got down and we actually saw individual atoms, right? You could see individual, <laughs> it was really interesting that you saw individual atoms with the uh, uh, electron microscope. So the limits on the resolution come from lambda. lambda. The smaller lambda, the smaller the angle can be that separates two objects from each other. Right? And the bigger the aperture, the better. So when you're looking at it now, okay, so with the, with, the, with the naked eye, I'm getting 20K, which is not realistic. Not realistic because my lens has aberrations too. The lens has aberrations and these limit resolution. Right? Resolution doesn't only come from this and the fact that monochromatic, there is other reasons for limits on resolution. Look them up on Wikipedia, please, or some sort of source, uh, whatever. Uh, what limits your resolution? So we can go using different lambdas, you're gonna affect you, you're looking at white light, uh, the lens, there's spherical, spherical uh, lens approximations and whatnot, things, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you're making a lens, there is lens imperfections and everything plays a factor in bringing this down from 20K to something more reasonable, like, I don't know, um, you know, um, I could see a car with you know, two lights from a few hundred meters, maybe three, four, five K, something like that, okay? But this is a theoretical limit on, uh, you know, if everything else is going fine and you have laser vision, really, you should be able to, to do this, okay? Um, so limits on resolution. I'm looking with the naked eye, and I get that this is gonna be 20K. What happens, guys, if I look with the telescope now? Okay, okay. What happens with the telescope is that now with my eye, my eye, the aperture for my eye is five millimeters wide. Okay, aperture for a telescope. Okay, we get the Hawaii telescope at five meters. Okay, so how does that affect things? So you get people looking at with binoculars. You get two people looking with binoculars, and one of them has a huge magnification, like fifty times or whatever, but it's got a small objective piece. So you got, we didn't cover that in geometrical optics. Uh, you can look at that in the textbook, look at telescopes, look at microscopes, um, you know. Um, I don't like to go into that part of the course in geometrical optics because you can design your own telescope now with two lens combinations, like, like what you're gonna see on, on Wednesday, this week. Uh, you can design your own telescope, your own microscope, magnification and whatnot, and that'll give you magnification, right? So you have guys with, you buy, a telescope, you buy put binoculars for, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks, and they got a huge magnification on them, but the optics are not so clean, and the objective piece, which is objective, so you have your telescope is here, there's the eyepiece is here, and the objective piece is up there. The objective piece is the one that determines the resolution. So imagine what you can do with a five meter telescope out of Hawaii, or uh, so, and you look at all these, uh, uh, all these uh, astronomy um, uh, radar arrays, right? Uh, you have these, uh, you know, uh, astronomy telescopes, called telescopes, uh, but they don't use light, they use, uh, you know, um, other wavelengths, right? You can, you know, uh, radio telescopes, right? And look, they're huge, they got huge bases, they got huge uh, 
receiving dishes and that is the limit of your resolution so now imagine that you are using uh, a telescope with let's say we're using the um, um, telescope what's the reason let's say i'm using a big telescope with a 50 centimeter 50 centimeter objective lens okay my lens is five millimeters the uh, so you got five millimeters right and i'm using a telescope uh, let's call it uh, five millimeters i'm using a telescope with uh, um, fine let's say five centimeters okay so uh so five centimeters okay so what does that tell you now that if you're using a telescope of five centimeters that's ten times better ten times better resolution. so you, this goes up to 200 kilometers and with a five meter telescope you can you can imagine what it's going to look like so i'm looking at mars with a nice uh with a nice uh pair of binoculars or whatever or telescope and i can see big things but i have no resolution because the objective lens is not big enough if we're talking about the limit of evolution being just the size of the lens. There's other issues that creep in as well. Right? So you got these guys buying, uh, you know, um, so you have two guys, you know, with two telescopes. One have the same magnification. One is able to see some details on Mars better than the other because of the resolution limits. Um, same with, uh, you know, if you're trying to catch cars speeding, um, you have to have good resolution to tell which one was it, right? And, uh, you know, um, yeah, so uh, you get guys who buy binoculars and they're looking at stuff and one guy sees huge things but he can't tell apart what's, what is what, it's kind of fuzzy. And the other guy has maybe less magnification right, than, the, other, than the, uh, the first one, but can see stuff a bit more crisp and more clear because of the uh, resolution limits. Uh, this is a really cool topic, guys. Uh, Riley Criterion Resolution Limits, uh, please look it up on your own. Okay, we're going to pause now for uh, a bit and then continue with the more realistic description of the double slit interference.